them being my opponents on the day of judgment is more beloved to me than actually having my opponent as Rasulullah that the narrations on the Mahdi are kathira shahira they are larger number and they are well known everybody knew about them. everybody accepted them. Yeah. so deen and shariat is above everyone it's above our parents it's above everyone if someone has said something wrong even if that person is a close person to us we have to highlight their mistake uh, al arf al wardi of suyuti you got at tawdih of Shaukani, you've got you know uh, other scholars that have written on Ashratu Sa'a like Barzandi, which you're going to mention here. They've all written on this topic and compiled the hadith just on Mahdi. No, no, within the world of evidence, is the highest and most solid, concrete form of evidence that you can ever have. How serious these people were regarding this belief? Were they affected, just like Akram Nadwi has said, by Shiaism? And Rafi the only body. guy that hasn't come across him is Dr. Akram Nabi. <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulihi al Kareem. Amma abad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Um, welcome back to Al Islam Productions once again. Alhamdulillah, it's a great honor to be at your service once again. Protecting the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and serving the cause of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, today uh, we're going to be discussing a very, very important issue which has arisen uh, not too long ago. It's a short video of uh, the infamous Dr. Akram Nadwi Sahib. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open his heart and mind to the truth and grant him humility and humbleness to accept the truth and also his respected followers. It's a video that reached us uh, in regards to the Mahdi and what Dr. Akram Nadwi says about the Mahdi. That the Mahdi is not a specific personality, rather it's a general term and it can include anybody and everybody. Anybody that, you know, guides people. Uh, and then he specifically mentions Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then, you know, people like that, they can all be the Mahdi. So, inshallah, in today's little session, Mawlana Osman Saab has uh, carried out some great research. Alhamdulillah, Mawlana has done a fantastic job researching. And I can guarantee yourselves, uh, watch till the end, inshallah, and you will see, you will come across uh, such a research. I can guarantee, I can guarantee, um, uh, I mean, uh, this level of research and such, uh, you know, a, a, a large amount of research on this topic all in one place i don't think you'll uh, you'll re you'll get anywhere else so alhamdulillah he has done a fantastic job uh, credit where credit is due um, alhamdulillah Molana on the past couple of weeks he's been on it and he's been researching and he's come across a lot and it's opened a lot of doors and inshallah it, i've built a lot of understanding uh, got a lot of understanding from it and inshallah ta'ala if you listen with an open heart uh, you'll also you'll see you'll benefit and you'll uh, you know definitely derive some sort of understanding of where Dr. Akram Nadwi uh, is going wrong and his followers. Uh, one very important note, my brothers and sisters, and that is you know there's an Arabic saying, "La tanzuru ila man yaqul." Don't look at the person who is saying it. My right, Malana? Don't look at the person who is saying it. Balin zuru ila mayakul. Rather look at what the individual is saying. Don't look at this as this is Abdul Halim and Usman Iqbal saying it, therefore we are not going to accept it. Rather, brothers, sisters, open your minds, open your hearts, look at what we will inshallah be presenting to yourselves. The books and the individuals whose statements and whose research we are going to be presenting to yourself look at that look at what we are presenting to you don't look at me Malana Usman and also brothers and sisters the ummah has been hit with a major calamity and that major calamity is that when serious issues are being discussed yes I understand they are supposed to be discussed with adab and ihtiram if somebody does leave the parameters of Adab or you might feel that that individual has left the parameters of Adab and Akhlaq, 
don't let that cloud your mind and understanding and don't let that shut the doors on that individual but rather have a bit of tolerance tolerate it a bit only so that you can understand the haq because what we are coming across is we are seeing followers and fanatics who are listening to people wrong people people who are teaching them bid'a people who are teaching them kufriyat shirk and they and when other people come to correct them and to guide them the only card that they want to play is you are not doing it with adab you are not doing it with respect you are not doing it with akhlaq or you are such and such a person it's because you got a black amama on your head you know you look like i don't know you've come you've walked out of some cave or something so my brothers and sisters we are all going to go in our own own graves our sheikh our ustad our peer our murshid you know our uh, idol they're not going to help us what is going to help us is the sincerity that we look at an issue with if today these issues which are being put in front of yourself the evidence which is being put in front of yourself if you look at these issues with sincerity that will most definitely guide you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alimun bidati sudur allah sees what is inside our hearts allah will see the sincerity that you look at the issue with so my brothers and sisters don't let this cloud your mind don't let it cloud the screen and you know block you off do not let shaitan make this a hail and a barrier between ourselves and yourselves rather just you know i mean if you don't like us or you think that we're not your type of people just look away from the screen but just listen to the evidence that is being presented inshallah taala i will guarantee you you will derive benefit so i'm not going to take too much of your time alhamdulillah maulana is going to be explaining to yourselves how important of an issue the self of this ummah and then the mutaqaddimin and the mutaakhirin the latter scholars and the earlier scholars how they felt about the concept of the mahdi how they believed it to be one specific individual and similarly the status they give and the importance they give to the narration and the traditions which have come in regards to the mahdi are they weak are they authentic or they do they reach a higher level which is known as tawatur which is the highest form of evidence that you have within the world of evidence so inshallah maulana sahab is going to put all that in front of yourselves <laughs> open your hearts open your minds inshallah and let's listen inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me tawfiq may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give yourselves tawfiq inshallah wa ta'ala maulana if you want to inshallah start jazakallah maulana so maulana can we start by and listening to akram nadwi's video ji jazakallah regarding imam mahdi coming are these hadith authentic and what is the correct view on this issue you know mahdi in arabic language means a guided so abu bakr siddiq was mahdi umar was mahdi uthman bin affan was mahdi ali was mahdi umar bin abdul aziz was mahdi so there have been so many people who have been mahdi guided the prophet said alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al-khulafa'i ar-rashidin al-mahdiyin you have to follow the my sunnah and sunnah of khulafa who are rashidin al-mahdiyin you know the tabu ka siddiq and umar uthman ali they are rashid al-mahdi they are mahdi same way at the end of the day isa islam will come and he will rule the world so he is also mahdi because he is guided so there are hadith in muslim which indicates that isa islam is mahdi mahdi to be an independent person you know completely you know we don't have any sound hadith for that not in bukhari not in muslim not in muatta but there are some weak hadith so and I, it is more strong opinion in shia madhab shia school so i really don't don't think you know coming of somebody independently to be mahdi is something very important and if there is any proof for that the mahdi the one who is mahdi he is isa islam he is the guided one by people believe that not hard really because mahdi is anybody like you know your teacher could be mahdi he is guided the mahdi is just a title not name of anybody mahdi means guided so there have been so many guided people and there will be more guided people will come in the future we don't know but the one mentioned by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the end of the day he more like is isa alaihi salam so here we will listen to the clip now here 
we can we can you know summarize his uh, clip in three main points number one he's saying the hadith of an independent person by the name of the mahdi as described by ahlu sunnah yeah. okay are weak Okay, so there's no such belief in, belief in Islam. It's not important. Your ustad could be Mahdi. Yeah. yeah? So are you, are you going to give hadith on that? A hadith, I'm going to give a hadith okay. on that. Okay. Meaning a hadith, this, today's uh, sitting is just on the views of the scholars, the experts of hadith. Okay. Hadith, we're going to so say... So today we're not discussing the hadith. Today we're not discussing okay. the hadith. But are you going to have a video discussing the hadith? There's going to be dozens of a hadith. And we're okay. going to prove their authenticity. Roughly, just, just for the views, roughly? More than 30, 40. Okay. Inshallah. Yeah. Authentic. Authentic. And are you going to be able to prove the authenticity? Inshallah. Yeah? Inshallah. With sources that Dr. Akram Nadwi agrees with? Well, you know, we can't guarantee that he agrees with them because he doesn't agree with many things. Tomorrow he might turn around and say, I don't agree with, you know, um, all Hadith scholars in this because he's like that. You, he's not a predictable person. <laughs> yeah? You know, experts, he'll say, I don't believe in this and I don't believe in that. Any field he gets into, if he talks about fiqh, he'll say the fuqaha were misogynists and they weren't fair. And they were influenced by uh, Greek philosophy. Hmm. If he talks about Aqidah, they'll say they were influ influenced from outside Islamic, non-Islamic culture. If he talks about Hadith, he'll say, oh, you know, now we never did a good, you know, a good job on Sahih Muslim. Or I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, commenting on Muslim, you know, my sharh is going to be... So he's paving the way for himself. Mm -hmm. And this is the Dajjali type of thought. Yeah, yeah. So basically what you're trying to say is... Uh, I think Morana Saab has given a very, very good sort of a summary of Dr. Akram Nadwij, which I would definitely agree with. That whichever field he goes in, what am I right? Whichever field he goes in, he disagrees with the experts of that field. Classical experts. The classical experts, which everybody agrees upon, yeah. he disagrees. Yeah. Paving, uh, yeah. paving the way just for himself. Yeah. Okay, you know, I'm Mahir. Mahir no, no, you've read the Asr in Sayyid Bukhari. Mm -hmm. Yeah? نقتدي بمن قبلنا ويقتدي بنا من بعدنا. Yes, we make iqtida and we follow those before us. Before us. And those after us will follow us. This yes. is the tasalsul. This is yeah. how the ummah is firm upon yeah. the tradition. Alhamdulillah. When we start cutting off and calling towards ourselves and our own research, research, fine. If it's research, further strengthening mm -hmm. what the previous ones have done, you know, to give it authenticity. Okay, so in this uh, session, you're not talking about the hadith. You're not going to talk about the grading of the hadith. You're not talking about the status of no. the hadith. Rather, you're going to stick more towards just, to just the, the kalam of the hadith experts yeah. and where uh, uh, needed uh, mufassirun yeah. and aqidah experts. Okay. Keep and where they've mentioned this belief of the coming in akhir zaman of the Mahdi. Right. Yeah. So should we get started with that one? We'll get started yeah. inshallah. Take it inshallah. So as you're reading, I've just got the copies with me. I, I just want to look up yeah, yeah. what you're saying. And inshallah what we'll do is for the viewers at the end of the video, we'll put all the scans in there. And inshallah we'll try to get them out on social media as well. Inshallah. Yeah. So I'll be supervising this, so be careful. Inshallah. Any khayana, any I'll get you a lot. No problem inshallah. Yeah. inshallah. So bismillah rahman rahim So first reference for them is you know, Minhaj al-Sunnah mm. of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. Yeah. Yeah? And ikhtisar of this book has been done by Shamsuddin al-Zahabi yeah. rahimahullah. Can you now, just mention what an ikhtisar is? There's going to be so, viewers that don't Yeah, yeah. so basically he was done is an abridged version of the book. And he was an expert in this field. Shamsuddin al-Zahabi rahimahullah, an expert in the field of hadith, in the classification of the narrators, in grading of hadith. He is an all-time major authority in this field. So now, when it comes to these ahadith on this topic, okay, here on page 562 of this abridged version of Minhaj al-Sunnah, he says, فَنَقُولْ After quoting a hadith on this topic, الْأَحَادِيثُ الَّتِي تُحْتَجُّ بِهَا عَلَى خُرُوجِ الْمَهْدِي صَحِيحَةٌ رواها أحمد وأبو داود والترمذي. So he says the hadith, um, you know, through which we take evidence of the coming and the emergence of the Mahdi alayhi ridwan are authentic. Imam Ahmad is Musnad, Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi as we're going to display inshallah in the videos to come on this video have all uh, you know, narrated these hadiths and then he starts narrating the hadiths which I don't want to get into. Anything more on this? That's it, fine. Okay. That's, that looks Next good. reference inshallah. You've got Allama Munawi rahimahullah's Faydul Qadir. So this is a sharh of Suyuti's Al-Jami'u al, al -Sagheer. In here, right, 
in the volume I have, Al Mahdi Rajulum Min Waladi, page 279. Under this hadith, he mentions, Akhba wa Akhbar al Mahdi Kasiratun Shahiratun, Afradaha Veru Wahidin Fit Talif. That the narrations on the Mahdi are Kathira Shahira. They are large in number and they are well known. Well known. So now there's two things, Kathrat and Shahrat. Kathrat and Shahrat. So they're large in number. Abundance and popularity. Yeah. 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 Both. Yeah. And so it wasn't like they were just an abundant amount of narrations in one corner nobody knew about. No. Everybody yeah. knew about them. Everybody accepted them. Yeah. 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 So they're not, basically, they're not strange hadith. You know, like in hadith, you the only guy that hasn't come across him is Dr. Akram Nandwi. <laughs> and then he says, Afradaha ghayru wahidin fit ta'alif. In other words, they've done ifrad, they've done written ajzani. Yeah. So many scholars have written specific articles. So you've got al uh, arful wardi of Suyuti. You've got at tawdih of Shawkani. You've got, you know, uh, other scholars that have written on Ashrat al Sa'a like Barzandi, which you're going to mention here. They've all written on this topic and compiled the hadith just on Mahdi. Uh -huh. Now, they saw the tawatur and the mass transmission, the authenticity, but for some reason, Akram Nadwi can see this and he's saying this is more or less a Shia belief. Astaghfirullah. Yeah. Astaghfirullah. Next, to go to that extent, Walana, it shows how much animosity he must have towards this sort of concept in Islam, that he's attributing it and affiliating it to Shiaism. Just remind me one thing when I'm going to mention when I get to the topic of Ibn Khaldun and where he's gone wrong. Okay. Because remember, Akram Nadwi, more or less, he's taken his, this view from Ibn Khaldun. Ibn Khaldun was a historian, okay? And um, he, was, he was, you know, he's not a person who has expertise in this maidan of hadith. No. Right. And he went majorly wrong. Scholars, is there any reason why... Ibn Khaldun might have gone wrong or might have refuted this concept. We are going to discuss that. Uh -huh. Look, Allah Sakhawi Rahimullah brings his tarjima and he brings his bio inside ad daw ul okay. Inside ad daw ul he brings the bios of those scholars who are from Qarn Tasi, the 9th century. And amongst them is Ibn Khaldun. Right. And in there, you know, he gives it improperly. He, he, uh -huh. he explains where he's gone wrong, uh -huh. why he's gone wrong. Yeah, when the Maghariba ulama heard that he's become a Qadi yeah. in Misr, I believe, yeah, they were shocked. They saw this as basically degrading the status of being a judge. Him being a judge is degrading the status because he's not ahl of it. So he wasn't firm in fiqh. He wasn't firm in hadith. So how can you base an opinion on a historian who's weak in the field against the entire ummah's unanimous consensus and large amounts of hadith that have reached level of authenticity and mass transmission to an extent where now Aqidah experts bring it as an Aqidah and from day one from Sahaba's time, remember, over 20 Sahaba narrate the hadith of the Mahdi. And from each Sahabi, obviously, many, many chains. The hadith of the Mahdi, just authentic hadith, past 40 in number, just the authentic, marfu hadith than these athar of Sahaba. So basically, it's an Aqidah that can... And then, the experts have brought this along with the Aqidah of Dajjal and Aqidah of Dissension of Isa Islam. And it's so interlinked and strongly linked with these two other Aqidahs and uh, uh, Alamat al -Sa and and uh, Signs of Day of Judgment that, you know, rejecting one is more or less Tantamount. inevitable, tantamount to rejecting the others. Okay. Nukhbatul Ali li sharh Bad il Amali. This is a book, a sharh of an aqidah kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, in poetic form, okay? Um, it's a manzuma of uh, an aqidah. And this Halabi scholar, this Syrian scholar, wrote a sharh of this, Muhammad bin Sulaiman <coughs> al Halabi, al Rayhawi. And here, okay, uh, Al Iman bin Uzuli Isa alayhi salam, wa kadha bi khuruji al Mahdiji. He brings this from the things that we must have Iman upon. Okay? To bring Iman, it's amongst our Qida to bring Iman on the coming down of Isa Islam and the coming of Mahdi. And you can see here, Mawlana, if you just look at the text, Al Iman of Nuzuli Isa alayhi salatu wa salam wa qadha bi khuruj al Mahdi, he's bringing it along with, it, just as you said earlier, yeah. you can see the, that. They're interlinked, so they're together. Yeah. But then he quotes a hadith, Mawlana. 
Now, I'm not authentic in this hadith, Balki experts have written extremely weak or even fabricated. But he brings the hadith, and many scholars bring this hadith for this point. And the hadith on authority of Sayyidina Jabir radiallahu anh, he says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has said, like I said, many scholars have said this hadith fabricated. Uh -huh. But my objective is not to present the hadith as an authentic hadith, is to present the text of this Aqeedah scholar who is bringing this hadith and what his view of the emergence of uh, 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 Mahdi was and the coming down of Isa al-Islam. This hadith seems to stay man kadhdhaba bil dajjal faqad kafara wa man kadhdhaba bil mahdi faqad kafara whoever rejects the uh, you know the dajjal he's done kufr whoever rejects mahdi is done kufr now him bringing this okay we don't take this as a hadith but what, what we are saying what is it does show it, it shows what he felt he felt on this issue yeah it and, shows what he believed and one i'm going to mention another place in al burhan the muhaddith uh, Muttaqi al-Hindi, yeah. you know, the, the author of, uh, or the compiler of Ganzul Umal, he has a book on the ahadith of Mahdi called Al-Burhan. And in the end of there, he brings an istifthah and a question that was posed to the muftis of Makkah Mukarramah in the time of Ibn Hajar al-Haythami. Ibn Hajar al-Haythami was Shafi'i, he was a mufti, Shafi'i mufti, there was a Hanafi mufti, Maliki mufti, and a Hanbali mufti. Yeah? And the, a question was posed to them, there was a man, you know, from Hind, and he, you know, uh, 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 there's a group that believe that if you don't believe he was Mahdi, then you are a Kafir. You know, this, this basically was a cult. What, and, and also, so, so what is the ruling upon this group? And also what is the ruling on someone who denies the Mahdi? Yeah. So we're gonna, when we get to that, I'm going to explain that the Hanbali Mufti also brought this Man bil Dajjal faqad kafara Man bil Mahdi faqad kafara Which means that regardless of whether we take this and the chain is, you know, the, the hadith is fabricated or not. Their view was that rejection of the Mahdi is a danger to Iman. This is under okay, Let me ask you something. Let me, uh, would you say somebody who denies uh, the coming of Mahdi is a kafir? What, what's your opinion? No, we, we, do, we don't have the right to have an opinion because we don't have the credentials to make takfir. Oh. That's the job of a qadi, that's the job of so a... So you're not making takfir here? We're not making yeah. takfir. You're not calling Dr. Akhil a kafir? We can't, we yeah. can't do that, we don't yeah. have the qualifications. Alhamdulillah. What we are saying is yeah. these experts saw this as an issue of haq and batil yeah. at the minimum. Yeah. We're not telling anyone to call every rejecter of Mahdi a kafir. What we are saying is that person is surely, definitely a deviant who reject, who is rejecting large amounts of hadith mm. and texts from Aqidah books that the entire Ummah has embraced with acceptance. Yeah. Okay. Then you've got next Mawlana Sharh Hussun of yeah. Barbahari, Bar <coughs> common and famous uh, text that many uh, uh, you know people uh, quote in Aqidah. And here he says, Well, Iman bin Uzuri Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam, Yanzilu fayaqtul dajjal, wa yatazawwaju, wa yusalli khalf al qaimi min ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. He brings the fact that Isa alayhi salam will offer salah behind al Mahdi. Next. Like I said, all the text will be at the end of this video, inshallah. Inshallah. Safarini's aqidah book. Here, Mona, Safarini, he was a humble alim, okay, he was driven by text. Okay, so he was Athari, Athari. and look, he says, Qad So he wasn't an Ash'ari, eh? Well, he, look, Mona, he wasn't, because look, if you bring someone who was into philosophy, Akram yeah. will say he was affected by Greek philosophy. If you bring a book of fiqh, so he's always got way out. But look, these people, they're clearly stipulating that we are saying this based upon narrations that have been authenticated by giants in this field cannot be rejected. Yes, there are weak hadiths on this topic, but they don't harm the authentic hadiths. Right. If anything, they further strengthen them, well, yeah. right? And they don't harm the uh, uh, Hisan, meaning the Hassan hadiths, mm. right? If anything, they strengthen them. So just because Akram Nadwi have seen few hadiths, uh, you know, weak hadiths weak on hadith. a topic, if anything, they're gonna add more icing to the cake, but not harm the Sahih hadith on this topic. Okay, he says, قَدْ كَثُرَتِ الْأَقْوَالُ فِي الْمَهْدِيِّ حَتَّى قِيلَ لَا مَهْدِيَ إِلَّا عِيسَى He says, you know, many different people have come with different opinions with regards to the Mahdi. To the extent where some have done gone to uh, say that لَا مَهْدِيَ إِلَّا عِيسَى based upon a very weak hadith. Now they're denying the independent person called Mahdi and saying, 
Isa is the Mahdi. So whoever is being referred to again and again, like Akram Nadwi says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Uh, Isa is the Mahdi. He answers that by saying what? So he says, Qad kathurat al aqwalu fil Mahdi. That there's so many different things people are saying with regards to the Mahdi, right? To the extent that some people have you know, denied and rejected the existence of an independent Mahdi and said, La Mahdi illa Isa. There is no Mahdi except Isa. And he refutes this even though it's based upon a hadith which is very weak. He's refuted it by saying, Was sawab alayhi alayhi ahlul haq? That the correct opinion upon which the people of the truth are upon. Man, I, I, just, I, just, I just want to stop you here for a minute. You know when we played the clip at the beginning, Dr. Akram Nadwi, he gave the impression that that hadith is in Muslim and Bukhari. No, this hadith is not, not in Muslim. I think it's in Ibn Majah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's in the Sunan. And uh, from the Sunan, sorry, only Ibn Majah. Yeah? It's not yeah. in Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood, and Nasa'i. Right? It's yeah. not in Bukhari, it's not in Muslim. So, we ask number one, this is a big, you know, well pointed, yeah. one well noticed. Yeah? This hadith is not in Muslim. Because as far as I can remember, I've read a lot of Jarrah on the hadith. Yeah. And the impression he gave is that hadith is in Muslim and Bukhari and I was thinking to myself, hold no, on. I don't think he mentioned Bukhari, okay, he mentioned Muslim, 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 right? Muslim, Muslim but yeah. the hadith is very weak, number okay. one. And number two, now that we've started on the topic, let me just explain it. La Mahdiya illa Isa. The hadith says there is no Mahdi except Isa. The scholars have approached this in one of two ways. And all scholars have approached. There is no difference of opinion in their approach, which means all experts from this Ummah are on one side, Huh? Deviants, even Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Mirza Qadiani Ghulam uses Qadiani, this. Yes. Yes. Deviants use this to pave the way for something else. Now, there is no Mahdi except Isa one of two ways. The, the ones who are you know, uh, uh, into Jarh and Tadil, the first thing they say is that this, uh, there is no Mahdi except Isa, the hadith is weak. It doesn't stand a chance against mass transmitted over 40 authentic hadiths. Yeah on this topic that the entire Ummah has ijma upon. There is ijma upon the coming of an independent man called Muhammad ibn Abdullah. You are the ismu ismi, wasmu abihi isma abi. Rasulullah s.a.w. said, my name and his name will be the same, my father's name and his father's name, same. And his laqab, okay, is Mahdi. There is ijma upon this. Right. Now, he said about the Shia issue, that the Shias also believe. Well, the Shias and Ahmadi, one of the main different, you know, uh, differentiating factors is the fact that the names are different. The names are different. Yeah. So what's the name there? Muhammad ibn Hassan al Askari. The names are different. The whole objective, the objective is going to be different. He's already born. I was not born. His objective is going to come to punish people, etc., etc. Mm. They don't. If the, you know, the, 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 their Mahdi is higher than prophets. Our Mahdi is an in, uh, not an infallible. Okay, he's fallible. There's a whole video on. There's a whole video on. If anybody wants to uh, uh, know a bit more about this issue, if you just go down our channel, you'll see there's a whole massive. Okay, we'll put it in the uh, description. Yeah, we'll put it in the description. Shall I? That's you right. Molana has done an in-depth yeah. difference between the Shia and Sunni Mahdi. Yeah. Anyway, the issue of the Hadith of La Mahdiya Illa Isa, very weak. Okay, so we ignore it. It doesn't stand a chance against mass transmitted our authentic ahadith. <laughs> Number two, if we're gonna even take it for argument's sake, the scholars have apply, applied a ta'wil and interpretation that through which it doesn't clash with the ijma and the mass agreement of, uh, yeah, uh, the, of the ummah upon Mahdi. And that is that this Mahdi here is in a linguistic sense, so rightly guided. There is no one highly rightly guided on the level of infallibility as Isa alayhi salam, that is going to come to assist this ummah and bring back the glory of this ummah. Because the only infallible, okay, who is going to come before the end of time is Isa alayhi salam because Isa he's a prophet. Right? Now, that doesn't negate, based on this interpretation, the coming of the Mahdi. Because Isa alayhi salam, in terms of Mahdawiyat, in terms of being rightly guided, because remember, Mahdi is not the name of who we call the Mahdi. That's a laqab. His name is Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Yeah. So this doesn't ne negate his Mahdawiyat. If anything, it states Isa alayhi salam linguistically is a rightly guided Mahdi in his own right. But the independent person okay. referred to as I'm Mahdi. Gonna, I'm going to have to pull the reins. Okay. Right. Let's carry on with this. We need to get these. So okay. brothers, because that would have just continued. Right. I know when once this starts, it doesn't stop and we need these. Okay. Yeah.
So, so Mulana. So he says the correct opinion uh, which the Ahli Haq are upon is that the Mahdi is an independent person, Isa is Islam different, wa annahu yakhruju qabl al nuzul Isa alayhi salam, that he's gonna come before Isa alayhi salam. Wa qad kathurat bi khurujihi al riwayatu hatta balagat hadda tawatur al ma'nawiyyi. And the opinions and the, the riwayat and the narrations are so large in number regarding the independent Mahdi that they have reached a level of mass transmission. Okay? Yeah. Mass transmission in terms of their meaning. So, I just, can I explain more on the mass transmission? Yeah, 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 go for it. Yeah, I'm just finding Okay, it. because sometimes I feel like, you know, you can't no, no, talk. No, no, yeah. Okay. Mass transmission means there's so many ahadith on this topic that have been narrated, right? That they have, the, 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 the narrators are so much that it is, you know, we believe that it is impossible for all of them to have united and gathered upon falsehood and a lie. Right. And Tawatur Manawi, this mass transmission which is in terms of meaning, means that even though every single hadith text may be slightly different, but they've got a common factor. The common theme inside them is the Mahdi. The Mahdi. And it's not necessary for every single wording of every single hadith to be the same. So you've got different types of Tawatur. This Tawatur Manawi is also called Tawatur Qadri Mushtarak. It's a different yeah. name for it. Anyway, then he goes on to say, right? Safarini Rahimahullah goes on to say, sure. That this belief, okay, and these hadiths were widespread amongst the ulama of the Sunnah, to the extent where this belief now in an independent Mahdi Muhammad ibn Abdullah is going to come before Isa alayhi salam and lead the prayer of Isa alayhi salam behind him, you know, began, began to be counted from the aqidahs. And the beliefs of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Okay? And he says, even though he says, Bisanad in Mardi, and he brings the hadith once again, the hadith, many scholars have said it's fabricated. Man kathaba bid dajjal faqad kafara, wa man kathaba bil mahdi faqad kafara. Whoever denies that dajjal is in kufr, whoever denies the mahdi is in kufr, it shows that Safarini believed this aqidah to be an aqidah of haq and denying of it to be falsehood. Right? Moving on. Then Mawlana, he also goes on, okay, um, to say, وَقَدْ رُوِيَ عَمَّنْ ذُكِرَ مِنَ الصَّحَابَةِ وَغَيْرِ مَنْ ذُكِرَ مِنْهُمْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ بِرِوَيَاتٍ مُتَعَدِّدَةٍ وَعَنِ التَّابِعِينَ مِنْ مَنْ بَعْدَهُمْ مَا يُفِيدُ مَجْمُوعُهُ الْعِلْمَ الْقَطْعِيَّةِ Subhanallah. That it has been narrated from Sahaba, many Sahaba, and other Sahaba as well, that have been mentioned here, and from many Tabi'een, okay, and these narrations as a whole give ilm qat'i. In other words, they give a definitive proof and they are convincing. We have yaqeen upon them. There is no two ways about it uh, regarding the comment of the Mahdi. Then he says, Fal imanu bi khurujil Mahdi wajibun. So iman upon the coming of the Mahdi is wajib. Kama huwa muqarrarun inda ahli ilm wa mudawbanun fi aqaid ahli sunnah wal jama'ah. Just as is established uh, you know, within the uh, uh, circles of the scholars and that has been documented within the aqaid and the books of creed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Remember brothers, this is not anything that the, you know, the Ubandis have differed upon, Salafis have differed upon, the Barelis have differed upon. No, These, the, this is something which the entire Ummah has agreed upon. Differences with regard to Mahdi, you'll find Shia Sunni issue. You'll find Qadiyani Muslim Qadiyani, issue. Yeah. So, I am not saying Akram Nadwi is a Qadiyani. Don't take anything out of context, please. What I am saying is, it's a major thing and he's attacking a major fundamental of Islam. Our, our Islam and our beliefs. Because remember, someone can say, okay, it's not the oneness of Allah, it's not Akhirah, how is it a fundamental? Well, Rasulullah Sallallahu has prepared us and us in Akhirah Zaman is more of a fundamental oh, because yeah. we need to be equipped with knowing about the end of times uh, beliefs so we can be ready for them. I mean, you know, you've got like narrations, Morana. Sorry, I know we've got yeah, a lot to get through. Got but you've, to get you've got through. narrations like from Sayyidina Abu Huraira uh, who, you know, who's telling students, say salam if you see that, you know, if you come across uh, Isa in your Islam. time. You know? So, next reference is from Aul uh, Ma'bud, yeah, Sharh of Abu Dawood. And this is by, uh, once again, so he's not from, you know, uh, uh, our fraternity of Dioband. He is Ahlul Hadith. 
Okay? He's a ahle, major ahle hadith alim, right? And uh, Azim Abadi. And he, he basically wrote this shark on Abu Dawood. And in Kitabul Mahdi, he says with very clear words, Wa'lam anna al mashhura bayna al kaffati min ahli al Islam. Ala mamar al a'sar anna hu la buddha fi akhir al zaman min zuhuri rajulin min ahli al bayt. You ayid al deen. Wa yudhir al ad. And then he goes on. The, the, you should know that you know, the, the, the well known, famous, popular aqidah between the entire Muslim Ummah, amongst the entire Muslim Ummah, Allah Mamar al Asar, throughout the generations, meaning from Sahaba right till this day, it is, it is necessary in the Akhir Zaman, the final days of the coming of a man from Arul Bayt, and who will, you know, who will bring justice, and then he goes on. And then he goes on and says, وَخَرَّجَ أَحَادِيثَ الْمَهْدِي جَمَعَةٌ مِنَ الْأَيْمَةِ the, the ahadith on the topic of Mahdi have been, you know, quoted and narrated uh, by a whole group of aima and imams of the field of hadith, and then he lists them all. Okay, and then he says that they're sahih, and the ahadith on this topic are sahih. And he's also then gone and refuted la Mahdiya illa Isa, where the denial of Mahdi being an independent person and saying Mahdi is Isa, like Akram Nadwi is trying to establish. Next, it's absolutely, you know, I'm absolutely shocked. I am absolutely shocked that how can somebody who is held in extremely high esteem, like Akram Nadwi, you know, the way people portray him to be as if he is one of the greatest muhaddis of the time. His research is on a different level. Somebody who is a pukwam, somebody who knows the aqaid and the hadith in and out, left, right and center. This is the way he's portrayed. Well, do you know? How could he ever be ignorant of something like, look, look, here. Well, look, I don't, you know, you know what I what think, I don't think it's ignorance. On, on a serious note, but I could be wrong. And this is something which I just leave for the scholars to look into. In ad Lami, yeah, I believe, Sakhawi Rahimullah, under the bio of... Um, Ibn Khaldun, he mentioned Ibn Khaldun had one trait in him. He liked to be different. He liked to be different. <laughs> Even when he became a judge, yeah, you know, the formal, actual, official uh, protocol yeah. to wear certain kind of, you know, you, he, you have your thing, he, uniform. He refused yeah? to, yeah. to wear his normal clothes. So, so when, this, when this thing comes, and you know, may Allah forgive us, and may Allah not let us ever have it, but when this, you know, when a sense of arrogance and kind of self-conceit comes inside a person and they think their opinion, where everyone just pleased with his own kind of opinion, when this comes inside a person, what happens is they're ready to reject what the entire ummah has agreed upon for what, you know, and I'm, I'm going to use these words, and they're harsh words, for what Satan has injected whispers inside their brains. Mm -hmm. Because it's injections. Yes, definitely. It's waswasa. Waswasa. Was was so, the hifadat and the protection is stay upon the tradition of Islam. Anyway, Mulan. Anyway, let's carry on. Anyway, Nazratun Abiratun. Fi maza'ibi man yunkiru nuzuli Isa bin Maryam alayhi salam qabl al akhirah. Allama Zahidul al Kawthari rahimahullah. The teacher of the master in hadith and fiqh and aqidah and he himself was a master in these fields. Okay? The teacher of Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda, rahimahullah. He's written, okay, a book on the topic of the uh, coming down of Isa alayhi salam. And then he says, Wa'amma tawatu. In this book, he says, uh, on page... I think Walana, this one should, inshallah, answer the thing of... Uh, his uh, maharat in ilm yeah, hadith. Yeah, hadith. Yeah, expertise in hadith. This, and this is something for, for his followers. That look, don't look at my uh, 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 um, methodology. Okay? I might come across harsh. I seek forgiveness from you, from him, and from Allah. For it. But look at what we say. Look at what we quote. Okay? وَأَمَّا تَوَاتُرُوا أَحَادِيثِ الْمَهْدِي وَالدَّجَالِ وَالْمَسِيحِ Zaid al-Kawthari Allah says, As for the mass transmission and tawatur of the hadith of Dajjal, Isa alayhi salam and the Mahdi فَلَيْسَ بِمَوْضِعِ رِيبَةٍ عِنْدَ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ فِي الْحَدِيثِ Again, see, he's brought الحديث. all three of them in one line. Yeah. This is not, he says, this is not an area of doubt within the Hadith experts about mass transmission that these, you know, three topics, the Jal, Isa alayhi salam and Mahdi, 
their topics have reached us through mass transmission undeniable evidence i.e. you are a master then you should not have any if you're a master in hadith you, you can't have, any, have doubt. any doubt yeah then he goes on and he says or uh, bil hadith. He says, as for some mutakallimeen, you know, having doubts in some signs of qiyamah reaching us through tawatur and undeniable mass transmission, he says, even though they themselves have admitted that it is wajib to believe in all signs of qiyamah and that they are haq, if any of these mutakallimeen have done this or written this, it is because of their Qillat uh, meaning the lack the of khibra. Khibra means expertise, expertise in hadith. So it's lack of expertise in the field of hadith. But he says, They're excused. Why? So long as So long as basically once the hujja and the argument has been you know, established over them, so long as they don't rebel after that, it's fine. So same again. This is Dawah the Fikr. For the Nadwis. So, yeah, so this we, we, we'll see from here how much of an expert these people are the the lie the evidence has come in front of them if they haven't come across such a research before if they haven't come across these statements before regarding the tawatur regarding regarding everything else if this hasn't come it's come now yeah now they are not excused yeah. okay in the past they might not have come across this they might have just read one or two books they might have not come across all the different scholars, what they say, but now it's come. Yeah. Now let, let's put it to the test. Yeah. Are they going to humble themselves? Are they going to lower themselves? And are they going to say that, yes, alhamdulillah, this is from amongst the mu'taqad of Ahli Sunnah? Or are they still going to become a mu'ani deen? And are they still going to refuse it? Yeah. We'll see, inshallah. Inshallah. And we hope. We hope. And we'll commend we, if it's we, not. We make dua for them, Allah. Yeah. We make dua yeah. for them. Yeah. Wallahi, we are not here to make enemies with anybody. The whole reason, we, we could have been doing something better than this. We could have been going out, it's a nice day, we could have taken the family, if we, we could have brought if, all if, sorts. If we, if we don't want Akram Nadwi or his people or his followers to believe in Mahdi, then we're in danger ourselves. Of course. Because of lack of sincerity and not wanting good for others. We will be actually punished for this. May Allah save us from Amin. this. Amin. And may Allah guide them to coming on that. And like I said, if we are coming across harsh, may Allah guide us for it. May Allah forgive us for it. Okay. But it's the truth. It's Sometimes truth. natural tabiat is fine. But let's look at what's being said anyway. Al Isha'a, yeah. the Ashrat is sound. By Sheikh Barzanji, Al Husseini, Rahimullah. This is not the Barzanji, Rahimullah, who was at the time of Sheikh Al Arabi, Wal Ajab, Mulana Hussein, Al Madani, Rahimullah. This is a previous, earlier Barzanji. And his book has a tahqiq on it by Sheikh Al Adis, Mulana Muhammad Zakaria Kandelvi. Rahimahullah wa ta'ala buried in Jannatul Baqi, may Allah fill his grave with him. Okay? And basically in two different places, and they'll come um, on the screen inshallah afterwards, he mentions the tawatur. He mentions inside this book the tawatur. Okay? And Shaykh Zakari Rahmatullah in the first place mentions in the Hashiyah as well how even Maulana Ashraf Ali Thani Rahmatullah he has even a risala um, actually highlighting the, the weaknesses or the errors of where Ibn Khaldun has gone wrong. Mu'akhiratul Dhunun is called. And then he's reviewed Ibn Khaldun there. And um, he mentions other books like Fatawa Hadithiya of Ibn Hajar al Haythami. Anyway, we just will quote the second place here. He says, Tambi. Qad alimta anna ahaditha wujud al Mahdi wa khuru jihi akhir al zamani wa anna hu min itrati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam waladi Fatima wa min wuldi Fatima alayhi wa sallam. Balagat haddat tawaturil ma'anawiyyi That these hadiths on the topic of the independent Mahdi That he will be from the progeny of Hazrat Fatima Radiyallahu Some scholars have said from Hassan Some scholars have said from Hussein Some scholars have said No, both. both So from mothers and fathers side He's got the blood of both of them And he will come for this You know, these hadiths have reached mass transmission Once again So it's undeniable evidence There's no such I need to explain one thing more now When the scholars use this terminology Tawatu you do, it's not, you don't look at one hadith, or two hadith, hadith, or three, yeah. or this is weak. When the scholars say, we've looked at everything and we're coming to the conclusion of the tawatur, then this is a big statement to make. Yeah. And they've only come to that statement, or that conclusion, after putting every hadith down on the table, looking at them with a kind of eye of criticism within the you know, narrators, and then saying, 
Okay, these are authentic, this, this. How many different Sahaba they narrated from? Whoa, over 20 different Sahaba are narrating the theme of the Mahdi. Okay, over 40 authentic narrations. Okay, maybe about 45, you know, 46, 47. Maulana Shaykh al-Arabi wal-Ajam, Maulana Hussein al-Madani rahimahullah has compiled about 45 in Al-Khalifa al-Mahdi. A risala which was mafqood and then it, alhamdulillah it came, uh, uh, um, you know, to the public. Now, the thing here, Maulana, is that Tawatur is something which is beyond being an uh, authentic hadith in Bukhari. Tawatur is something which is undid. Quran has reached us through Tawatur. Yes, a different type of Tawatur. Like I said, Molana, within the world of evidence is the highest and most solid, concrete form of evidence that you can ever have. Yeah. Very, very simple. For any simple-minded pe person, there is nothing above Tawatur. It's the highest, most Molana, concrete, solid... do you want to just explain it like to, to the basic person? It's like saying, basically, there's no such thing as France. Yeah. Or it's like saying, basically, there's no such thing as, you know, there's no such thing as Africa. Africa, yeah. You know, something which is so clear, it's reached... So as, obvious, as, so many people yeah. know about it. So that basically it's the so entire impossible. world's wrong. Yeah. The it's entire in. world. So you know, you've got this many... Because what's happening is denial of this then raises question marks about what would you even... What are you accepting then as your deen? Yeah. Because if you're ready to deny that and reject that, then basically your, your principle-wise... You've got no principles left of what you see as Isl Islamic evidence. Islamic evidence. Okay. Anyway, next is also Al Ida'a, uh, Al -Ida uh, Ahlul Hadith uh, scholar. Yeah, the founder of the Ahli Hadith uh, uh, sect. Okay, Muhammad Siddiq Hassan Khan. And he writes in Al Ida'a, same thing again. He brings the Tawatur of um, these uh, Hadith. There's no point quoting it again and again and again. Here he also, okay, um, explains one more thing though, Morana. He says, what tafaqa, so he says these ahadith are mutawatir. He says, what tafaqa alayhi jumhurul umma, salafan and khalafi. The, 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 you know, vast majority and more or less the entire umma, the cream and the expertise of this umma, okay, have agreed upon the Mahdi as an independent person. Salaf, then the khalaf and those after them continually. And then he says, "Illa man la yu'tadu bi khilafihi," except those whose difference doesn't make a difference. <laughs> whose differing doesn't make a difference. If they're straight, doesn't make a difference. So Ibn Khaldun is that person, or from amongst those people who it makes no difference whether Ibn Khaldun accepts or you know rejects. So same way here, Akram Radwi is falling in the same thing, right? And then he says, وَلَيْسَ الْقَوْلُ بِظُهُورِهِ بِنَاءً عَلَىٰ أَقْوَالِ الصُّفِيَّةِ وَمُكَشْفَاتِهِمْ That the coming of the Mahdi is not based upon the Sufis and their visions and their kashf and these type of things. No, it's not based upon a dream. It's based upon firm ahadith and evidence in Sharia. Next. تَهْذِيبُ الْكَمَالِ مَرَنَا of Jamaluddin Mizzi. Rahimahullah. Anyone who's, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, has you know uh, uh, familiarized you know familiarized with the field of hadith will know about this book okay will know about the bios and the entries in this book will know and have you know regular use of this book what does he say he brings on the one entry one he says uh, same again he brings from Abu Hassan Al Aburri yeah the one who wrote Manaqib of Shafi'i yeah. he says قد تواترت الأخبار واستفاضت بكثرة رواتها عن المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني في المهدي وأنه من أهل بيته he says that the ahadith have come through through tawatur, and they are uh, uh, istifada means they are popular, they you know the the mustafid and the the ruat and the narrators of these hadith are in large numbers from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The uh, uh, more, uh, you know the, the 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 Mahdi is going to come from and he'll be he'll be from the progeny of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then uh, uh, he will fill the world with justice. Okay, and then you have. Um, Suyuti Rahimahullah's Al Arful Wardi. So, Suyuti is one of those people who wrote a specific book just on this topic. So, this is a just, just on this. And he also brings the Tawatur. Same again, he brings from Al Aburri Rahimahullah. Then, Murna, we have Jalaluddin Suyuti Rahimahullah. He has a risala just on this. And uh, this is called Al Arful Wardi. Yafi Akbar al Mahdi. And he also brings um, Abu Al Hassan. Al Aburri, Rahimahullah's Naqal of Tawatur. That these ahadith on this topic are mutawatir. Okay? 
Next, we have al sawaiq al muhriqa al sawaiq al muhriqa is by the Shafi'i Makki scholar Ibn Hajar al Haythami rahimahullah. And in here, he also brings al azhar tambih al azhar al nakhruj al mahdi qabr al nuzul isa. Okay, and then he goes on, and then he mentions the tawatur again. Same again from uh, Abu Hassan al Aburri. But tawatur al akbar was tafalat because there is ruwati. There's no point, you know, again yeah, and yeah. again just repeating this. <laughs> then you've got uh, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah in al Manarul Munif fi Sahih wa Daif. Okay, and here he also brings the statement of Abu Hassan al Aburri rahimahullah. Um, stating that the hadith on this topic are mutawatir. So these experts in hadith, these experts in fiqh, these experts in aqidah, you know, various fields of Islam. Look how he just trivializes it, brushes it to a side, makes it seem as if it's nothing. Yeah. No, I, I invite the, the, the uh, when we put the timestamps, inshallah, okay, on in the description, I invite people to listen to his thing again and again, and then look at these texts. And what I'm going to do, Mulan, I just want to draw your attention towards another thing. If this is what he has done in this issue, what does that say about other issues? Yeah. Can we trust him in other issues? So his opinion and what he says about other issues, it's, like, it's, it's at risk. Yeah. It's in khatara because looking at that, he looks so genuine. Oh, it's, it's nothing. Look, he does say this, he looks... Man he does bin Islam. Who's gonna take, whoever takes in various issues, these nawadid and these rare fringe isolated opinions, these opinions that are deviated and deviations, whoever takes this from different different people, and then he becomes an embodiment of deviations, the tradition from the earlier scholars, I can remember, is it Al-Awza'i or Ibrahim Nakhai, Rahimahullah, they say, I think it's in Bayhaqi, that he said, He's, he'll leave Islam, he'll end up leaving Islam because someone will have deviated in Aqidah, someone will have deviated in Fiqh, someone will have deviated in this opinion and he's basically just compiling them all in himself yeah. and then not only that, he's become a da'i towards it on YouTube he'll have nothing inside him except deviated opinions and then they'll say, to cover that thing up and say I'm respectful, people think me and you know, they've got nothing better to do well, we've got nothing better to do than Defend the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu And Muhammad, here I'd like to mention the statement of Yahya bin Sa'id al-Qattan. Yeah. You know like about juruh, uh, juruhat and uh, uh, jarh of uh, uh, criticizing narrators. Because this field obviously involves talking but about people in the sense that because you have to highlight their, their weaknesses. Someone asked him regarding this and regarding this whole thing that look you have to uh, speak but about people. What if they become your opponents in the day of judgment? Was he said, La an yakunu khusamai ahabu ilayya min an yakuna khasmi rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Them being my opponents of the day of judgment is more beloved to me than actually having my opponent as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'd rather defend the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pleased with me than trying to please them, remain silent, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking me, Why did you not defend my deen? Allah. So deen and sharia is above everyone. It's above our parents, it's above everyone. If someone has said something wrong, even if that person is a close person to us, we have to highlight their mistake. Definitely. This culture of staying silent because he's a big scholar needs to go. Yes, within the parameters. Like I said, if I'm harsh, highlight it. I make tawbah to Allah, I make tawbah and ask forgiveness to the individuals as well. But at the end of asking this forgiveness, I say, are you going to revise your opinion? Because if I'm this sincere and I'm you know, saying, if I've done wrong, then forgive me, then you need to be sincere in revising your opinion. That means you're not sincere in telling me to be calm. Yes, definitely. Allah, Allah accept Mullah and Allah give us all the tawfiq to remain firm and to Ameen. be just. Fatuh al next. This is how Allama Sakhawi rahimahullah. He is on a sharh on al fiyatul hadith. Now, in this, under the bahs of Gharib uh, Hadith, Aziz, Mashhur, and uh, 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 you know, Mutawatir, and these topics, he brings the uh, statement once again of Abu Hassan al Aburri, rahimahullah, and mentions that the hadiths on the topic of Dajjal, uh, 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 not Dajjal, sorry, even though they're uh, Mutawatir as well, on the topic of Mahdi, alayhi ridwan, are uh, um, Mutawatir. So he brings this as well. So this is a very, very strong reference from 
Allah Masakhawi Rahmullah. These person people. Well, no, no, you know, I, I just, want, I just want to bring something up here. Yeah. Uh, it's just what I just remembered. When the issue of Abu Les was going on, a very interesting video came from Dr. Akram Nadwi. When somebody asked him about his opinion, I think somebody asked him about his opinion regarding Nuzul of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, the return of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And even that, he didn't say anything wrong, but he showed uh, a lack of sort of, you know, confidence towards believing in it. And he said something along the lines of, if you want to believe in it, as in, you know, you know, his... His uh, uh, his demeanor towards it, it wasn't as concrete, it wasn't the... I think Abu Layth himself brought this up. Was well, I never saw anything from Akram, uh, Dr. Akram Nadwi right. this. Abu Layth himself brought this up. That yeah. he, he came to me... So yeah, Naheem Ajmal says basically that Dr. Akram Nadwi said to me that okay, fine, if you're rejecting the second coming of Isa alayhi salam, then you have a right to do so. Yeah, not major uh, issue. Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. You just present your evidences to the public and... It, but is that something to say? Th that's what I'm saying. If it's an ijma'i aqidah, if it's an aqidah based, or, or, you know, or, or, the roots of which are firm in Quran and Sunnah, how can you say that to someone? But when we don't know, Muhammad, we don't have proof if he actually said it. Okay. Wallahu a'lam. Right. That's for, that's between him and Naheem. Okay, you have got proof that he said it. But if somebody, like Naheem Ajman, is saying something like that, wasn't it for us upon him or not to come out and clear it? That I didn't say no, that. He did come out after that. Okay. Okay. But I think he did something in writing. But even that, I'm not convinced by it. Okay. He said basically, I believe this. But just saying you believe no, no, that. No, just saying you believe that. That's not it. No, no. You have to state what status this belief has within Ahlul Sunnah, within the Muslims, and what the hukam of a munkir is. So someone who's rejecting that, we're not saying give fatwa that he's yeah. disbeliever. What we're saying is to at least say, Rejection of this is deviance from Quran and Sunnah. Give a general statement because it is. Anyway, next morning you've got Muhammad ibn Ja'far al kattanis book. He's written a book, Nazmul Mutanasir. Nazmul Mutanasir, yeah, min al hadith al mutawatir. And he's collected the mutawatir a hadith on various topics. And he says, same again, that these hadiths have reached a level of tawatur ma'nawi. And these were, you know, well, well known, and uh, they they were began being counted from the beliefs of Ahlul Sunnah, and then he says from a whole group of Sahaba these hadiths have come. So he says, "Fal iman bi khurujil Mahdi wajibun." So believing in the, uh, the coming of Mahdi is wajib, just as it documented in the books of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'a, and is uh, firmly established within the people of knowledge. And then he goes on to explain where. Um, Ibn Khaldun has gone wrong. Anyway, I'm not going to go into this part. Towards the end, I'll explain about Ibn Khaldun. Right? And he goes on to say that Qadi Shawkani, um, the author of Nail Autar, has a, a risala on this. This risala is uh, called At Tawdih. This risala, I couldn't find the imprint, but um, Allah Zahid al Qawthari says in Nazratun Abira, that this risala is matbu in Hind, it's been printed in Hind. Right. Wallahu alam. But many, many different experts have quoted from this risala. And in this risala, he also says the ahadith on this topic are mutawatir. And, you know, the, the, uh, 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 this is an ijma'i aqidah. Next. And also he brings from Abu Hassan al Aburri, uh, uh, rahimahullah, regarding this. And not only that, he actually brings a brief bio as well uh, of Abu Hassan al Aburri. Rahimullah in Nazmul Mutanasir. So if you want to read that for the Tullab and those who have uh, a shock and uh, you know passion for books, you can read that inshallah. Next Mulla Ibn Hajar al Haythami Rahimullah Al Fatawa al Hadithiya. So he's basically got Hadith Fatawas. Right? And he basically was asked regarding this topic. What was he asked? An ta'ifatin yataqiduna fi rajulin matam mundu arbaina sanatan annahu al Mahdi al Mawud viduri akhir al Zaman. So basically, a whole group of people who believe with regards to a guy who passed away 40 years ago that he is the promised Mahdi, right? And, um, you know, what's the hukam? And they, and they also believe that whoever denies and rejects him being the Mahdi, he's done kufr. So, Ibn Hajar al haythami al-Makki, al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, goes on to explain that the ahadith on this topic are mutawatir. There's no point repeating again and again. 
And then he goes on to explain that, look, these people, because they have rejected the actual Mahdi, who is mentioned with his signs in hadith, and those hadith have reached us through undeniable, you know, authentic, mutawatir sources. So he says, uh, what does he say here? He says, وَهَاُولَاءِ مُكَذِّبُونَ بِهِ صَلِيحًا They have rejected all these ahadith. فَيُخْشَى عَلَيْهِمُ الْكُفْرِ So kufr is feared upon these people. Because wow. they have rejected the actual Mahdi. That is a huge statement. Wow. Anything else, Mala? That, that is severe. And if Dr. Akram Nadi's students really have ihtiram, mahabbat, love for him, if they really have concern for him, then we are not doing takfir. We are not doing takfir, dear Mala. No way. We are not doing takfir. But still, at the end of the day, you have giants like this, like Haytham, Rahimullah. You have giants. Well, no, shouldn't we be scared of when something is referred to as being kufr? Is, shouldn't we be fearful? That, look, let's just stay away from it. What's the, what's the harm in staying away? There can only be benefit. But, Mala, you know, may Allah give us tawfiq. Let's pray for him and pray for all these people who are deviant. That Allah guides them towards the truth Allah guide them. and Allah you know softens them. their heart. Amen. Amen. So Mala, I want to discuss one more thing here. Okay. And that thing is that, <clears throat> and this is also from Ibn Khaldun, that the hadiths on the Mahdi are not in Sahih al-Bukhari al-Muslim. So why should we take them? Or why should we take them so uh, seriously? There's two main answers to that. But I want to give one here. Okay. And that is, who said they're not in Sahih al-Bukhari al-Muslim? Just because the words... Mala, just before you go on, can I just ask, why do they have to be in Sahih Bukhari Muslim? That's that's the second answer. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, yeah sorry. that's actually yeah, I'm a, I'm the, that, the yeah, that's okay. actually part of the second answer. Okay, take it. So the the thing here is, who said they are not? Okay, what what does it need to be there for us to say that that is the hadith that mentions Mahdi, and what needs to be missing for us to believe that there's no mention of Mahdi? Do you get where I'm coming from? Yeah. Is there need to be a title of Mahdi? No. Because the Mahdi is a title. Will a description that cannot mean anyone else, when you put all the riwayat from the other books, strengthening this, mm -hmm. suffice? Of course, of course definitely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm going to quote to you one hadith from Sayyid Bukhari okay. and one from Muslim. Okay. Okay? The hadith from Sayyid Bukhari... What if I don't agree with it? Hmm? What if I don't agree? If I have Ishqal, can I do Ishqal on you? Yeah, you can. Okay, go on. Yeah, okay. Look. It very strong. From Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala. Yes, strong Mullah. Yeah. No problem. You as ma have as many questions yeah. as you want on it. Because I'm not going to be shy just because you're on camera. That's fine. <laughs> okay, go on. Okay. Go on. Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala. Okay. On his authority. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Kayfa antum? Ida nazala ibn Maryam fikum. Yeah? Or ida nazala fikum ibn Maryam. Yeah. Wa imamukum binkum. How is going to be your state? Okay meaning the state of the Muslim, when the son of Maryam alayhi salam, okay, descends amongst you, and your Imam will already be there as your Imam, yeah. your Amir, will be from amongst you. First hadith, this is in Sahih Bukhari. Okay. Okay. Imamukum minkum is the very Mahdi, based upon, or based upon overwhelming textual evidence mm -hmm. from outside Sahih Bukhari. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. Sahih Muslim. Okay. Can I just say the same Muslim one? Because okay. look, we have to put all ahadith together. Okay. Right. From Jabir radiallahu ta'ala, he says, he heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي يقاتلون على الحق ظاهرين إلى يوم القيام. Then he goes on to say, فينزل عيسى بن مريم, okay, عليه السلام, فيقول أميرهم. So Isa bin Maryam alayhi السلام will descend. And the Amir Amirul Mu'mineen of the Bariz of, of the time will say to Isa bin Maryam alayhi salam, Ta'al, salli lana, come forward, lead us in prayer. Fayaqulu la, inna ba'dakum ala ba'din umara. You are imams for one another, meaning you ummatis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa are imams over one another. Takrimata Allahi hadhihi al ummata. This is an honor that Allah has given you as an ummah. Now, this Amir. This Imam that is referred to and it's a specific incident is an independent person. Right. Then we have 
authentic evidence. The authentic evidence that we refer to as the independent Mahdi from Mutawatir Ahadith is excluding these two. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm coming yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. So what these scholars have said is Mutawatir is excluding these. These two. Okay. And that's talking about the independent Mahdi. When you put this and this together, there is no other one that you can believe in. We must believe this is okay, the Mahdi. Let me, let me try to get this straight. Yeah? yeah. Is this what you're trying to say? Yeah. That you have a set of hadith down here which are absolutely mass, mass transmitted mutawatir. Yeah. And those talk about the Mahdi. When Isa alayhi salatu wasalam arrives, the Mahdi will be waiting and he will read salah behind the Mahdi. Yeah. Now you have Muslim and Bukhari talking about the arrival of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam whilst there will be an Imam. So you're trying to say that that Imam there is the Mahdi. Yeah. And all those hadiths which clearly talk about the, Isa alayhi Mahdi. salatu wasalam and talk about the Mahdi and yeah. explain the Mahdi and describe yeah. the Mahdi. Yeah. Not but every single hadith not, but from the Mutawatir yeah, yeah, yeah. hadith, but many of them. Many of them, many, yeah, yeah, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. So many it narrows them. it down that this cannot... Look, basically it takes all those claimants of Mahdi who are outside the era of Isa alayhi out. Yes. Okay. It has to be the Mahdi from the era of Isa alayhi salam. Right? It has to be the Mahdi who is Muhammad son of Abdullah. Because Rasulullah yeah. said, Yuatiu ismuhu ismi, wasmu abihi isma abi. Mm -hmm. His name will be same as my name, his father's name is same as my father, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Mm -hmm. So it can't be the Shia Mahdi because he's not Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what in Badrul Majhud, I just mentioned this now, now that I'm here. In Badrul Majhud, Mawlana um, Khalil Ahmad Sahar in Puri Rahimahullah in his shirk on Abu Dawood has mentioned this. Under this hadith, okay, fi zikri al Mahdi, Bab, and then he mentions under this hadith that his name will be the same as my name. This takes out and rules out the Shia version of the Mahdi, and this, this makes a red and refutes their version. Okay. And then he goes on at the end of the hadith and says, Wa hasilu ma hadith. The end meaning that we acquire from this hadith is. He's emerging, he's coming, is yaqini, it must happen, it is necessary, and we must believe in it. Mm -hmm. So now, when we have these overwhelming evidences from outside Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, that meet exactly the same description, and Bukhari and Muslim is also mentioning hadith, okay, Bukhari under in Zikrul Anbiya, mentioning of the Anbiya, Hadith Al Anbiya, and Bab Nuzuli Isa bin Maryam, I'm going to mention it from Fathul Bari. When they mention this hadith about the you know, uh, uh, Amir and the Imam will be from amongst the believers, and that Imam is specified in overwhelming amounts of ahadith that are authentic in narration as the Mahdi, Muhammad mm -hmm. ibn Abdullah, then basically the, the vagueness goes. Vagueness goes. And this is a, a widely acceptable principle that riwayat, okay, just like in Quran, where there's a kind of a brief account of an incident or a story mm -hmm. and somewhere else there's something extra yeah, in another yeah, surah, yeah. you're going to say this is a part of that. You're not going to yeah. say this is two separate things. Yeah. So same thing, Murana. The riwayat, to fassiru ba'duha ba'dan, riwayat and narrations, Explain they explain that. one another. So to say I want it all in one narration, because look, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa might have said it in one go or in one go on various... But Sahaba took different, different, different. That's the whole science of hadith, and this is why we take from experts. Because these are historical reports of what Rasulullah has said. They are, they are a record of what Rasulullah trying to capture as much and in an authentic way as what Rasulullah has said. But when we put them all together and they've reached, them with authentic, reached us with authenticity, and there's so many in number that are overwhelming and undeniably true, then to reject them just because we don't have. Because Mona, this is like basically, this is like, you know, like over demanding. I want it from Bukhari. Mm. It has to be from Bukhari. I want it in Muslim. I want his name with his father. Well, okay. Where have you got all? The, where have you got all these conditions from? Yeah. Okay. Then we can ask. Has if you wanna go that deep, has Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, okay, commanded us to take something from only one place? One. This is basically. This is you know, demanding and going so specific 
This itself is not based upon evidence in Sharia. Yeah, yeah. Because we are commanded to take from Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, in general, the Ummah has agreed that in general, as a whole collection, Bukhari is the strongest book. Yeah. Okay, then Sahih Muslim. But that doesn't mean there's no golden chains outside. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean every chain in Bukhari has superiority over every chain elsewhere. Mm -hmm. No. So this whole thing comes from من قلة خبرتهم بالحديث The lack of expertise in the field of hadith So I just want to mention that, that the Mahdi is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and there is no majal and no gunjaish there for, uh, for denial of that. Is that Does that make sense? That, that, that makes sense, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. One that the author or the compiler of Kanzul Ummah, Book of Hadith, okay? He was from Hind, uh, you know, Muttaqi, uh, 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 Ali al-Muttaqi, Al-Hindi, Sahibi Kanzul Umman, Rahimahullah. He has a juz. Al-Burhan fi alamati mahdiyi akhiri zaman. Inside here, he brings the signs of the Mahdi, okay, in his book. And he mentions a question here that was posed to the muftis of Makkah Mukarramah in the time of Ibn Hajar al-Haythami al-Makki al-Shafi'i. Shafi'i mufti, Maliki Mufti, Hanafi Mufti, and the Hanbali Mufti of the time. Okay, the senior, or you, you can call them, they're the, you know, the, the, the like you got Chief Justice. Mm -hmm. Okay, they were the, the Qadis and the Muftis of that time. And basically the question is that there's a group of people, they believe someone from India is the Mahdi. He died in the year 910 and they believe uh, he is the promised Mahdi and whoever rejects this Mahdi, he has done Kufr, and then the question is asking, what is the ruling upon someone, okay, um, um, the actual Mahdi, mentioned in the Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one who is the actual Mahdi. Now, um, the first fatwa, the Shafi'i Ibn Hajar Al-Haythami, he goes through all three points, okay, believing in some, that person as a Mahdi, and then believing in whoever rejects this specific man as the Mahdi, that group believed they are kafir. And then the question is asking rejection of the actual Mahdi mentioned in Hadith. So he goes on to say, look, if someone rejects the actual Mahdi, remember Ibn Hajar al Haythami is the same one who writes in As Sawaiq al uh, 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 um, uh, no, in, in Fatawa Hadithiyah. So this is the third reference we're giving from him. Yeah. In Fatawa Hadithiyah, he says that someone who rejects. Yeah, you know, clear a hadith on the Mahdi. They are authentic. The Ummah has united upon their authenticity, the experts of the When we say the Ummah, remember we don't we, we don't necessarily need to have every single individual from the Ummah. If the experts agree, then anyone whose difference doesn't make a difference makes or no difference to this agreement. Now, this is the same man who says Kufr is feared upon someone who is denying. Wow. He goes on to say that if the rejectors of the Mahdi are doing it because they do not accept the sunnah, meaning they, not, they do not accept the hadith as an evidence in sharia, then they are kafir because they are like parvezis. Yeah, yeah. They are munkirin hadith. Obviously, that's clear. Yeah, and we don't say these people that were refuted yeah, yeah. are from this country. They, they're not from that okay, yeah. but if it's because of inadun li al Islam, because they want to be different, they want to rebel against the experts of Islam, and the, this were were refuted. Which is a trait. Of this a this is a trait. Definitely, it is a trait. Of Dr. Akram Radwi, and we're not going to shy away from saying that. With so, due no, respect. One of the, I mentioned that earlier on. Whichever field he goes into, he wants to clash with the experts and the giants of that field. So this is definitely a trait of him. And he says it here. Go on. Yeah, he says that there. Yeah. He says, if it's mahdu inadin, yeah, li aymatil islam. That's what you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah, so these giant scholars, these leading experts in these fields, okay, if it's because these people are trying to oppose their opinion, then okay, we're not going to say they're rejecting the sunnah, right, because the, their intention is not to reject the sunnah. But, فَهُوَ يَقْتَذِي تَعْزِيرَهُمْ الْبَلِيغَةِ وَإِهَانَتَهُمْ بِمَا يَرَاهُ الْحَاكِمِ لَائِقًا yeah. In other words, they're doing a crime. Jarima. Yeah? 
and the hakim of the time needs to make ta'zir of these people. Yeah. He needs to punish these people. Now, obviously, yeah. he's saying that based in Makkah Mukarramah. Yeah. But what we're saying is... Obviously, this is, we can't do that down here. No, yeah. there is no hakim of the time yeah. here. What we're saying is, this is what you know, Ibn Hajar al Haythami. So if they were in front of him, mm -hmm. he would have done that. He would have done that. So yeah. what we're saying is, this is someone... You don't know, Mulana, we're saying here in Bradford, and some, you know, there's crackpots around. <laughs> no, look, Mulana. Bi azimi jarima him. Okay? Major crime. Right? You know, major blunder in Aqidah. Wa qubhi tariqatihim. It's a very wrong, deviated path that they're on. Wa fasadi aqidatihim. And their Aqidah and their belief is corrupt. Corrupt. So now, you know, you can say this can be imprisonment, this can be other things. We're not going to go into what he said because that's not relevant for us. Mm. What's relevant for us is how serious these people were regarding this belief. Yes. Then you've got the Hanafi Mufti, the Maliki Mufti, the Hanbali Mufti Mulma. His fatwa is quite interesting. Okay. Because towards the end, he also says that denial of the Mahdi is kufr. Now, we're not saying it. Okay? We do not have the credentials to say what we are doing is naql and transmitting how serious these people were regarding this belief. And why were they serious? Were they affected by non-Islamic culture? Were they affected, just like Akram Nadwi has said, by Shiaism and Rafidism? If that is the truth, which it can never be, according to Akram Nadwi, Islamic history has been polluted and the, what we call the glorious days of Muslims mm. have been basically actually, uh, you know, pollution from non-Islamic influence. Exactly what Abu Leh said yeah. regarding, regarding the coming of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, because that's one of his, his claims that Islam was affected and it was influenced by Christians. Yeah, people would sit around campfires and talk campfires. about stories. Talk, Astaghfirullah. Yeah. Astaghfirullah. Anyway, Mulana, moving on. So we mentioned Sheikh Zayd al Kawthari. Rahimahullah. Okay. His student Abdul Fattah Abu Ghuddah, he's got a student who's still alive. May Allah preserve him, give him a long life, take more khidmah from Ameen. him. Ameen. Yeah. Sheikh Muhammad Obama. And seriously, Mona, I know Akram Nadwi is older than us in age, got a lot more knowledge than us. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Okay. No problem at all. But we can put in a word of advice and say, you need to learn from the methodology of Sheikh Muhammad Obama. Look how Mormon, look how balanced he is in his approach. Subhanallah. Look how he loves the awliyaullah. Look how he is always with the people of Haq, praising them, appreciating their works. Look how he look how he mentions the, the classical scholars with respect. With respect. And that's why you see the shine that, that nur upon him. Yeah. Mormon, you know, word of advice from the you know depth of my heart. If Sheikh Dr. Akram Nadwi was to do the same, Mawlana, Wallahi, the acceptance that he has, the small bit of acceptance that he has, that would have doubled, tripled, quadrupled. Yeah. But because he doesn't do that, because he wants to go on his own bandwagon, because he wants to call towards himself, he's, you know, in a very, very low tone, bad mouthing, Salaf, Mutaqaddimin, Mutaakhirin. This is why he hasn't received the same acceptance that he would have. Yeah. So here well, now we have Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba. Mm -hmm. So this is Abu Bakr Abdullah bin Muhammad bin uh, Abi Shayba. Okay? Kufi. And this is um, the ta'liq, with the ta'liqat and the footnote, marginal notes of Sheikh Muhammad Awama. He's done a very good job. Okay, it's a voluminous work, right? This is volume number 21. Here, Mawlana, under the hadith, in Kitab al-Fitr, under the hadith of Yakunu fi ummati al-Mahdi, right? He mentions, number one, his own opinion. He says, Wa mimma yambaghi zikruhu. That is suitable for me now to mention here at this point. Anna hadith al-Mahdi mutawatira. The hadith, a hadith, and the narrations on the Mahdi are mutawatir. Kama nassa, just like the Imam have clearly stated this. So from this we learn, it's not one Imam who everyone's, who just basically everyone just quoted from him and this just become, uh, became a common thing, number one. So the ahadith on this topic are mutawatira, they are in, un, you know, un, undeniable, indisputed, overwhelming mass transmission ahadith. 
Many scholars of hadith and experts have quoted this. Okay. And then he says that from amongst the kind of most comprehensive works is this uh, on this is Suyuti Rahimahullah's Al Arful Wardi. And then he goes on to say about Ibn Khaldun. Okay? And he explains uh, a few things there. Right. And um, he goes on because look, there's no time, Mulana. He goes on. Yeah, you're going to have to speed it up. The, he goes on, Mulana, and mentions um, what, you know, the. Um, Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid yeah, um, is a muhaqqiq and he done a ta'liq on the kitab of um, you know, uh, Imam Suyuti rahimahullah Al-Arful Wardi okay, that is in Al-Hawi Lil Fatawa yeah? um, and he said Yara ba'du al-bahithina anna kullama warad an al-mahdi wa an al-dajjal min al-Israeliya he said that some researchers believe that everything regarding Mahdi and Dajjal are from the Israelite narrations. In other words, they've come from outside. Now, they've come from outside. Then our experts start calling him Mutawatir. And they started writing in Aqidah books. That's a major statement. Yeah. Right. So he says, then Muhammad Awama, Hafizahullah, says that the you know the researchers that he's referring to he's he's basically trying to say that these are no researchers these researchers that this uh, muhaqqiq is referring to is um, Muhammad Abdul Abdu. and the people of his madrasa oh. Walijalu Madrasatihi so they have no status in these issues if anything they're seen as deviants in these issues so Muhammad Awama Hafizahullah has clarified this point that these people are deviants of their very later period. They hold no status in this Maidan and this fan. Anyway, Mullah, moving on. Here we have, and I won't be able to go through all of it, right? Here we have Maulana Badri Alam Mirti Rahmatullahi. Okay? He's written a book in a few volumes called Tarjiman Sunnah. It's a masterpiece. It's in the Urdu language, right? And, you know, um, one and a half page he's given a khulasa. You know, some students of knowledge, Mama, this is just a short word regarding reading some Urdu books as well. Some students feel that if you read Urdu books, it's like you're weak in knowledge. That's incorrect. Mm -hmm. Some students feel that until you don't adorn your shelves with, you know, uh, gold kind of plated um, Arabic books, right, you're not seen as a big alim. This is incorrect. The color of a book makes no difference. <laughs> Remember, like Allah Makhal Mahmoud Sabrahim Allah used to say, Elam ki koi zaban nahi. Knowledge has no specific language. Yes, Arabic is a beautiful language, language of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Quran and Jannah. But remember, what you can find outside Arabic, sometimes you can't find in Arabic books. Yeah. What summaries? And the summary is given here is beautiful. That is why I am not even going to read it out. For the students of knowledge, just read this on 382 and 380. Three, one and a half page, Khulasa, volume, volume. Um, volume number, uh, it's the last volume, so it's volume number four, yeah, uh, or last volume or close to the last volume, anyway, next Maulana, another Urdu book, Maulana Idris, Kandelvi Rahmatullahi, he's got an Urdu book, very nice Urdu book, it's called Aqaid al-Islam, and in here he explains as well, that there is Tawatur, okay, these Ahadith have reached us through Tawatur, and there is ijma, the whole Ummah has a unanimous agreement upon this belief in the Mahdi. Moving on. Okay, all these kinds, inshallah, will go on the media and also the end of this video. Mona, next is Fathul Bari, subhanallah. You know, Fathul Bari, here in the, you know, uh, kitab of the mention of Hadith al Anbiya, he mentions in the Bab of Nuzul of Isa, alayhi salam, he mentions the Tawatur of the Ahadith of this topic. Okay, so Hafiz ibn Hajar al Asqalani, you know, he was Hafiz of Dunya, with Hafiz and an authority in the hadith for the entire world's hadith students. Yeah, he, these people, Mawlana, they don't just sit there quoting the Tawatur on something that there is no Tawatur upon. So he's mentioning Tawatur, read this, learn from this. Next, Mawlana, another Arul Hadith Alim. He's done a good job. Obviously, some places he's gone all out against the Hanafis, you know, on, on Tirmidhi, uh, Tuhfatul Akhwadi. But we have to give it to him, Allah. He's done a good job on it, right? It's a good, you know, book for those who are interested in this kind of uh, 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 ikhtilafi thing 
and where he takes his evidence and what he brings against us and etc etc but the issue this is Abdul Rahman Mubarak Puri he's a student I believe of Azim Abadi of Awnul Ba'bud mm -hmm. now he brings here in the top in the chapter of the Mahdi in Tirmidhi right he brings Mona uh, a mention of the Tawatur and then he also goes on because there's no time now he also goes on to mention uh, I believe regarding um, you know the, the fact that the entire Ummah has accepted it is something which has been a belief since day one. Mm -hmm. So this is something which the students need to and then he's mentioned which Sahaba has come from. I'd like to mention one or something else. Okay? There's a book right in Tirmidhi. Imam Tirmidhi Raimullah he's got a, a style in his book. The style in his book is his methodology in his book is he doesn't bring more than you know one or two or a few hadith, usually one or two, okay, in every chapter. And the other hadith from other Sahaba on the same topic doesn't necessarily mean it's the same hadith on the same topic related to this he'll just kind of refer to them by saying Wafil bab, in this bab there is hadith from Anabi Bakr wa Umar wa etc etc radiallahu okay and then the one that the scholar, later scholars what they did was this was obviously a job for them to locate where these hadiths are from who mm -hmm. so you have Dr. Habibullah Mukhtar, Shaheed Rahimullah, the great alim from Pakistan, Karachi, who wrote Kashfur Niqab, yeah, and called it Tirmidhi wa Fil Bab, and he did a very good job. And probably the best job on this is here, Nuzhatul Al Bab, it's in six volumes, and here he's brought in the um, chapter of the Mahdi Marana, right, look the other chapters, where Imam Tirmidhi Rahimullah mentions wa Fil Bab. Right, on other chapters, look how, look, Wafil Bab, one, one Bab here, and the other hadith on the same topic, about one and a half page, or one page, okay, so look, half a page, but when it came to the Mahdi, the other hadith that he struck down, where Imam Tirmizi is just hinted towards them, one, two, three, four, five, okay, six, six. Seven. Seven, wow. Okay. Eight, eight pages eight, 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 on wow. just, not, not all That's the hadiths, enough. just the hadiths that Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah has referred to in his book that other Sahaba also on this Allah topic Allah of Mahdi. Allah. Eight pages Allah just Allah. listing the hadith. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah is amazing, you know, if you read the Muqaddimah and, and the, the struggle for knowledge of these, these scholars. And, you know, you know. And Allah, you know this book, I just want to say, this book, right, I bought it two times. So one time, I bought, yeah, I bought it two times. So you've got two copies. No, give me one. no, no, I can't give you one because one's gone. One's gone to a great person. Okay. I'll what see. happened was when we were in Madrasa, our Ustad Hazrat Mufti Shabir Sahib, Hafizahullah, may Allah raise his status. Amen, amen, okay. Amen. Our one of our great Hadith experts, Allah Ustad, Allah. and he mentioned that um, this book was just out, and he used to praise it a lot in class. Obviously, he was a master of the religion. Master. Well, master. He just, I mean, just for for the viewers, he'd walk in and he just. He just start, you know, just start from the time he's before he's even opened his book. Yeah, he knew his book, you know, like the back of his hand. Alhamdulillah, may Allah preserve it. Now look, he mentioned that Sheikh Yunus, uh, rahimahullah, yeah, it'd be good to give as I got. So I just gave my copy. I believe I, I think it, it was for Sheikh rahimahullah, and that's why I had to buy it again. There. So look, now you know, the, this book. Is so amazing, Mona, that I would say I think in the whole of Tirmidhi he's only missed a few places in Wafil Bab. This is how deep his research is. He's not more or less, he's more or less, you know, located every single hadith from the Sahaba that he's narrated. Allah from, Allah and that Allah he's Allah Allah. So he's done a major service. Just, just a side point, man. Well, I, I just want to make dua that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give jazai khair to these ulama. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for these ulama, if they didn't show us the light, you know, where would we have been? Yeah. And and for this reason, those ulama who, you know, the mutaqaddimin, mutaakhirin, the salaf, those that have passed, you know, we it's very important that we stay upon their tracks and we follow their footsteps and we honor these people, we love these people. And we try to be like these people and we defend these people. Well, no, where there is legitimate difference of opinion, yeah. no issue. No issue. No of your thing. Huh. Huh. If it is uh, opinion, 
and you wanna, you know, you claim to be Hanafi, but then you're going clearly against the Madhab, yeah. then clear clarify your stance yeah, that I'm not Hanafi. Hanafi. Yeah. But not an issue because these are related to amal, mm. not major issue. As long as you clarify stance, are you a muqallid or a non muqallid? Yeah. Nevertheless, sometimes ulama for their own selves they may do an amal which is based upon a hadith, and that's their choice. Maybe they have certain reasons for doing it. Okay. Nevertheless, Mawlana, what the entire Ummah has agreed upon, there is no compromise in this yeah, thing. Definitely. Okay. He goes on to say that Qadi Shawkani, he says, Mawlana, Al-Ahadith. Okay, okay, this is not Hadul al -Babi, eh? This is now going back to um, Abdurrahman Mubarak. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. The commentator of uh, uh, Tirmidhi, okay. he says, Al-Ahadith al warida fi khurujil imam al-Mahdi kathiratun jiddan. The hadiths regarding the Mahdi are too many in number. Okay? Kathiratun jiddan means loads. Then he goes, but most of them are di'af. Now, from this Mawlana, this is where people are deceived. Mm. Because, what would you say most of them? So, it's kathiratun jiddan, a hundred, two hundred, hundred and fifty? What? But look, when we've got over forty that are authentic, regardless of how many are da'if, okay, when we've got experts saying there is ijma and tawatur upon this, and when we've got the ones that are authentic, if anything, the ones that have weakness in their chain further support these. Further support them. You see, what happens more than that is people hasten, they see the word da'if, it's a really kind of deceptive type of word for people who do not have expertise in the field. Mm -hmm. Because da'if seems like, you know, wrong, let's oppose this topic because, no, it's nothing of the sort. Anyway. And then he says, um, because he goes on and he says, look, okay, he goes on and he says that there are so many that are on the level of his, uh, Hassan, right? And then he says that Qadi Shawkani, the author of Nailul Autar, says in Al Fatuh Rabbani, Al Fatuh Rabbani is a collection of his fatawa, big, you know, a, a, a collection of his fatawa, and he says in there, Abdurrahman Mubarak Puri said, الَّذِي أَمْكَنَ الْوَقُوفُ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْأَحَادِيثِ الْوَالِدَةِ الْمَهْدِيِّ الْمُنْتَزَرِ خَمْسُونَ حَدِيثًا وَثَمَانِيَةٌ وَإِشْرُونَ أَثَرًا That those hadiths that we, are, we can locate on this topic are 50. And 28 traditions of Sahaba in addition to that. Okay? And traditions of Sahaba, remember the, the rule here. When Sahaba's statement regarding something which cannot be known through logic, logic. something regarding the unseen, obviously Mahdi is unseen, when they narrate something and it's with a, a, a sound chain, then the scholars have said that is in the category, usually in the category of something from Rasulullah so because right. they couldn't have said it from themselves because it's from they the must thing. have heard it from the Prophet. Yeah. Allah, Allah. And Rasulullah so obviously is inspired by Wahi. Anyway, moving on, then he mentions some uh, uh, more things and then he goes on to say that Qadi Shawkani has said that these ahadith that we've narrated on this topic have reached the level of Tawatu. Anyway, moving on, um, you've got uh, Al Kawkab al Durri by the Muhaddith, Hazrat Maulana Rashid Ahmad Gangohi, Rahmatullah. Al Kawkab al Durri is the Sharh of uh, the Jami of Imam Tirmidhi. The father of Shaykh al Hadith, Maulana Muhammad Zakaria, Rahmatullah, he uh, wrote this commentary okay, that he studied from his Shaykh. And this was towards the end of his life, okay? And then this was further worked on by Sheikh Zakari Rahmatullahi in his footnotes. So, Babun Maja Fil Mahdi. And he brings the uh, a hadith regarding Mahdi. And you know, under the words, you know, Law lam yabqa min ad dunya, yeah, illa yawmun wahida, yeah, or yawmun wahidun, la tawwala Allahu dhalika al yawm. That if there was not as, uh, 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 only a single day left before Qiyamah, Rasulullah has said, okay, and the Mahdi had not yet come. Allah would lengthen that day for the coming of Mahdi. Meaning, his, so, so what does this hadith mean? He says, uh -huh. Because his coming, his leadership for the Ummah to the end, in the end of time, and his days of bringing the Ummah up is an issue which is, uh, which is, 100% con we've you know, got a level of yak conviction, yaqini, and it is going to happen, it has to happen, it is necessary. So this is the approach of the rightly guided hadith experts. 
Moving on. Subhanallah. Moving on, Mulana. Uh, there's not many left anyway now. Next, Mulana, we've mentioned um, from... We've not mentioned from Imam Qurtubi, rahimahullah. Tafsir al-Qurtubi, okay, Surah Al-Tawbah, verse number 33. Yeah, huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al-haqqi li yudhirahu ala al-deen kulli. On this verse, okay, Imam Qurtubi, rahimahullah, from his own self, he's not quoting the water from anybody. So he's not bringing from Abu al-Hasan al-Aburri, rahimahullah, that many yeah. scholars have. Yeah. yeah? Even though Sheikh Muhammad Awama has said, many scholars have said the water. But Imam Qurtubi, rahimahullah, what does he say? He says himself that those people who say Mahdi is Isa, they are one person. There is no Mahdi. He says this is not correct. Because the authentic narrations have reached a level of mass transmission with regards to the Mahdi and that he will be from the progeny and the offspring of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَلَا يَجُوزُ حَمْلُهُ عَلَىٰ Isa. So it is not permissible to take that hadith to mean that the independent Mahdi that is being referred to is Isa meaning they are one person. So this is Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah. Then we have At-Tazkira. At-Tazkira is a hadith book of the same Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala and this is فِي أَحْوَالِ الْمَوْتَى وَأُمُورِ الْآخِرَةِ Okay? And Imam Tirmizi, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, Imam Qurtubi, rahimahullah, I don't, yeah, I've got the book with me here. So here, in at tazkira he mentions the same thing, Tawatur again. So the scans will be on there, there's no point more than going into each individual thing separately, because there's no time to read it. Yeah. And then, more or less, the last uh, um, reference here, which I'm just going to leave, but I would say, for those passionate in learning, this is a very, very good summary on this topic and refuting or answering the misconceptions of people who had doubts like Ibn Khaldun on this topic. This is by Maulana Muhammad Idris Kandelbi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, the expert in Hadith and Tafsir. He's got an Arabic commentary of Mishkatul Masabi. It's called at taliq al sabih It's in seven volumes. Okay? And here, he's mentioned... Right. Well, I know somebody in, might have the four volumes and not have the three volumes, so just mention that part. Yeah, I mean, initially, I could only locate four. I thought um, th there was no more than four, and the commentary ended there. But a friend of mine, Alhamdulillah, a senior, um, he messaged me because I was looking for this, this, this volume to find if he's written anything on this and uh, to get the actual scans for this. So, Alhamdulillah, he offered me. So, there's actually seven volumes, and I believe, do you see the Darul Bashair print? Yeah, they've only printed the four volumes. But in yeah. Pakistan, seven volumes are available. Seven, yeah. And uh, 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 from what I've heard now, those seven volumes um, are available now in the shops there, inshallah. So, this is Kitab al Fitr, okay, on the Ashrat al Sa'a, the Bab. And this is page number 183, 184, and 185. And the same thing, just like it's written in Aqaid al Islam, is from Tawatur, there's Ijma upon this. So, there is no point. You know, uh, trying to oppose this, believe in it because it is the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And some scholars, Mawlana, mentioned mention in even tafsir as well. You know, under the tafsir of lahum lahum fi dunya khizyun wa lahum fi alakhirati adabun azim in Surah Al-Baqarah, they mentioned there that khizyun lahum fi dunya khizyun. This will be at the time of Mahdi. Okay. Now, Sharh al-Maqasid of the Aqida expert, Taftazani rahimahullah, subhanallah, found in here that he's also mentioned, he says that um, with this topic of imama, we can actually bring the bahth and the discussion of the coming of the Mahdi and the dissension of Isa alayhi salam, and these two are from the signs of Qiyamah and many authentic narrations have come on this topic. So authentic regarding Isa alayhi salam, authentic regarding uh, this even though the each individual one is a single narrator report, like Khabar Wahid. Mm -hmm. But when you add them up, then obviously this is what Tawatur is. When you add them up, then it makes Tawatur Ma'nawi or Tawatur Qadr Mushtarak. When many single narration, narrator reports come with the same theme from different, different Sahaba and different regions of the Muslim world, okay, this is called Tawatur. So he mentions this as well. All the scans, inshallah, for those people who are passionate in learning will be presented uh, on various platforms. 
May Allah accept this saying here one life. You've got any final words? Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah. You've seen Maulana's research. Uh, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us tawfiq to accept that research. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us tawfiq to look at that research, not to look at me, not to look at Maulana, not to look at our harsh approach or our soft approach, uh, not to look at our comments or anything, but rather look at the research, accept the research. If you had been fooled by Dr. Akram Nadwi's statements and his videos and his, uh, you know, propaganda regarding the Mahdi, then please do retract and you know accept the research. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give Maulana jazai khair and you know accept Maulana as a khidmat. Jazakum Allah for listening. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Surat ka naam hai Dew Band wale Ali Maqam hai Dew Band wale Surat ka naam hai Dew Band wale Ali Maqam hai Dew Band wale Surat ka naam hai Dew Band wale Ali Maqam hai Dew Band wale Ali Maqam hai Dew Band वाले अल्लाह का दीन पूरी दुनिया में आम कर गए अल्लाह का दीन पूरी दुनिया में आम कर गए कुफरी ताकतू का पैया जो जाम कर गए कुफरी ताकतू का पैया जो जाम कर गए उनके गुलाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले उनके गुलाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले जुरत का नाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले अल्लाह के शेर हैं ये बेहद दलेर हैं ये अल्लाह के शेर हैं ये बेहद दलेर हैं ये उम्मत का मान है ये असहाब खैर हैं ये उम्मत का मान है ये असहाब खैर हैं ये सबके इमाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले सबके इमाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले जुरत का नाम है देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले उसके लिए जो गुलशन ने दी को लतारता हो उसके लिए जो गुलशन ने दी को लतारता हो दीन हनीफ का जो हुलिया बिगाड़ता हो दीन हनीफ का जो हुलिया बिगाड़ता हो गैबी लगाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले गैबी लगाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले जुरत का नाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले हक सफीर भी हैं महरे मुनीर भी हैं हक सफीर भी हैं महरे मुनीर भी हैं बर सगीर पाको हिंद के अमीर भी हैं बर सगीर पाको हिंद के अमीर भी हैं माहे तमाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले माहे तमाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले जुरत का नाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले उसके लिए जो दी का हुलिया बिगाड़ता हो उसके लिए जो दी का हुलिया बिगाड़ता हो मिर्जे लहीन जैसी दींगे जो मारता हो मिर्जे लहीन जैसी दींगे जो मारता हो गैबी लगाम है देवबंद वाले 
आली मकाम है देव बंद वाले रैबी लगाम है देव बंद वाले आली मकाम है देव बंद वाले जुरत का नाम है देव बंद वाले आली मकाम है देव बंद वाले आली मकाम है देव बंद वाले अल्लाह के शेर थे जो बेहद दलेर थे जो अल्लाह के शेर थे जो बेहद दलेर थे जो हैदर सिद्दीक उमर उस्मा जुबैर थे जो सैयद सिद्दीक उमर उस्मा जुबैर थे जो उनके गुलाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले उनके गुलाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले आली मकाम हैं देवबंद वाले जुरत का नाम है देवबंद वाले आली मकाम है देवबंद वाले आली मकाम है देवबंद वाले लेकर पैगाम हक का आलम पे छा गए हैं लेकर पैगाम हक का आलम पे छा गए हैं जंगवी फारूकी आजम हमको बता गए हैं जंगवी फारूकी आजम जंगवी फारूकी आजम हमको बता गए हैं हक्का पैगाम है देवबंद वाले आली मकाम है देवबंद वाले हक्का पैगाम है देवबंद वाले आली मकाम है देवबंद वाले आली मकाम है देवबंद वाले जुरत का नाम है देवबंद वाले आली मकाम है देवबंद वाले आली मकाम है देवबंद वाले मशरत में धूम इनकी मगरब में धूम इनकी मशरत में धूम इनकी मगरब में धूम इनकी बढ़ के सईद अरशद पेशान चूम इनकी बढ़ के सईद अरशद पेशान चूम इनकी रब का इनाम है देवबंद वाले आली मकाम है देवबंद वाले रब का इनाम है देवबंद वाले आली मकाम है देवबंद